This is the day of the big game, isn't it? Yes, it is. I've been making these pennants for Mr. Boynton and myself. We've been named honorary cheerleaders, you know. Mm hmm And if we win the game today, he's going to take me out after. Oh. Well, I certainly hope you win, Connie. Yes, so do I, but Mr. Boynton's no pushover. <laughs> oh, you mean the game. <laughs> Yes, Madison and Clay High, you know, have been bitter football rivals for years. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Davis, I need a little extra change for expenses. Our salary checks were late this month. Just take what you need out of the sugar bowl in the kitchen, dear. There are always a few dollars in it. Oh, thanks. I wish you'd keep it in the saccharin jar, though. I'm kind of watching my weight. <laughs> oh, that must be Walter Denton. Come on in, Walter. Oh, dear. I hate to have anyone see me with my hair up in curlers like this. Rah, rah, rah! Hold that line! <laughs> Won't you be my valentine? Yeah. <laughs> Sit down, Walter. Oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. Hi, Mrs. Davis. Hello, Walter. Come on, sit down and have some coffee cake. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I hope you don't mind my appearance this morning, Walter. I, I really do look a mess. No, that's all right, Mrs. Davis. I'm used to it. <laughs> This boy is studying for the diplomatic service. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean any offense, Mrs. Davis. No, not at all. In fact, I was thinking you'd make a very cute couple. By herself? <laughs> no, she and our new assistant football coach. He's a very handsome man. Oh, now don't embarrass Mrs. Davis, Walter. Let the boy talk. <laughs> Who is this new coach, Walter? None other than Snake Ips Curry, the greatest quarterback Madison High ever had. I guess he's just about your age, Mrs. Davis. Oh, well, I'm just turning sweet 60, Walter. 60? Oh, well, I guess he isn't that old, but he sure is an antique. <laughs> yes, yeah, that is, back in 1912, Snake Ips Gary scored 47 points in the big game against Clay High. 47 points? Nobody's ever equaled it. That's why he's such an inspiration to the team. The kids are just nuts about him. Well, I'd like to meet him sometime. Well, no time like the present. Well, why don't you ride over with us and see the game at Clay High? A dollar and a quarter pays for your ticket plus a round trip ride on the chartered bus. That's a splendid idea, Walter. You consider my reservation made. Walter, if you'll help me with a few of these things, we'll be off for school. Okay, Miss Brooks. Oh, by the way, do you think you ought to bring a vase for the rose? The rose? He means the one Snake Hips Geary brings me every morning. It's a switch on an apple. <laughs> He's very fond of Miss Brooks. You know, someday I think I'll tell Mr. Boynton what Snake Yip said about you. Well, with a few slight revisions, maybe. Revisions? Like what? Oh, I'll just say, um, Mr. Boynton, Snake Yip's told me the man who marries Miss Brooks will be a very lucky fellow. So if you're in the market for a bride, Mr. Boynton... Walter, I... don't embarrass her. Let the boy talk. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Boynton. I saw you coming in, so I thought I'd visit for a spell. But if you're busy, I... Spell! Spell! <laughs> Pull up a chair and make yourself comfortable while I erase the blackboard. Oh, here, let me help you. I'm going to be able to repay you today, Mr. Boynton. Repay me? For what? For the lunch money I borrowed yesterday. You borrowed lunch money? From me? <laughs> I guess it just skipped my mind. Yes, I borrowed 60 cents. The exact figure was 66 cents, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> uh, let's see, you had the 15-cent meatloaf uh, soup and the 38-cent meatloaf and a 10-cent dish of ice cream. Sold for 66. I'll get my purse. Oh, forget it, Miss Brooks. What's the rush? You can give it to me at lunch today. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have had to borrow if our salary checks hadn't been late this month. Uh, borrowing's a bad habit, all right. But incidentally, I saved us a few dollars by making these pennants at home. You know, as honorary cheerleaders, we have to supply them for the faculty rooting section. Oh, they're very nice. Yes, Walter helped me with a few of them this morning. That kid is really a panic. You know, he's already betrothed Mrs. Davis to Snake Hips, dearie. Mrs. Davis? <laughs> you think she'll take to old Snake Hips? Why not? Well, Mrs. Davis is quite intelligent, and in many ways, Snake Hips is, uh, well, the way he speaks certainly leaves something to be desired. So does the way you don't. <laughs> I mean, 
He must have had a high school education to be able to qualify for the coaching staff. Please, Miss Brooks, Snake Hips knows little or nothing about modern coaching methods. He was hired merely out of sentiment. Well, what's the difference, as long as he's an inspiration to the team? Anyway, he's cute. You know, I heard that when he first made the Madison Varsity, he was so proud he couldn't even wait to get his official letter. He just cut some out and sewed them on an old sweater. <laughs> he's a character. Hi, folks. Hello, <laughs> Good morning. I just mentioned to some of the kids that I wanted to come over and trim that rose I gave you, and they carried me all the way over on their shoulders. Ain't that nice? Isn't that nice? I think so, too. <laughs> Sit down, Snake Hip. Those kids are awful fond of you, too, Miss Brooks. Can't hardly blame them for that. Eh, hey, Mr. Boynton? Well, <laughs> oh, no, of course not. No, indeed. Mark my words, Mr. Boynton. The man that marries Miss Brooks will sure be a lucky fellow. <coughs> <coughs> Is that a chronic cough? No, that's just a let's change the subject cough. <laughs> Say, Kip, do you mind if I ask you a question? Not at all, Miss Brooks. What is it? Who writes your sweaters? <laughs> oh, yes. I found out about the spelling being wrong right after I got out of school, but I kept it this way for luck. <laughs> the big game has got me so fired up, I just couldn't resist wearing it today. <laughs> I'll bet that sweater has seen plenty of action. The most prized possession, I guess. Funny how much a sweater can mean to a man. Or to a woman, either. <laughs> you know, Snake Hips, I bet you could tell some wonderful memories. Oh, ain't much to tell, really. My story, just like a lot of other so-called football heroes, I guess. On account of all the publicity I got after scoring 47 points in the big game, a local firm hired me for what they called prestige. Oh, you mean they sought to commercialize on your popularity? Uh, I guess so. Anyway, they gave me the title of vice president right off. After a few years, though, folks just seemed to forget all about old snake hips, and one day they changed me from vice president to maintenance man. <laughs> maintenance man? That's a vice president with a longer broom. <laughs> Paid the same salary, though, so I hung on till they... <laughs> Until they fired me a couple of years ago. Couldn't seem to land anything else. Don't want any old men, everybody would say. Well, you'll never be too old for Madison, Snake Hips. You'll be with us for many, many years. Hope so. Gosh, just being back at the old school, around kids again, warms me up all over. Gives me my confidence again. And that's all a person needs in this world, Miss Brooks. Just keep up your confidence, and in the end, You'll always wind up getting what you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be so egotistical. I was just looking. <laughs> you sent for me, Mr. Conklin? Oh, yes, Miss Brooks. Sit down. There's something I want you to do for me. An official duty which I honestly haven't the courage to face. What is it, sir? I want you to tell Snake Hips Geary that effective immediately he is discharged. Discharged? You mean fired? Fired, canned, given the old heave hole. <laughs> However you wish to phrase it, he's through. But why? Because of an inflexible board rule that all Madison personnel must have a high school diploma. Only minutes ago, I was shocked to learn that in his final term, Snake Hips flunked out in English. But that was over 40 years ago, Mr. Conklin. I know that, Miss Brooks, and if it hadn't been for the principle of Clay High, no one would ever have thought of investigating his background. You mean Jason Brill tipped off the board and they dug up his scholastic record? Precisely. But Snake Hips is indispensable now, Mr. Conklin. His coaching... His coaching is nothing, Miss Brooks. All he does for the team is carry the water bucket. <laughs> and it leaks. <laughs> but his value as a morale builder is colossal, Miss Brooks. Unfortunately, Brill is aware of that fact. If you take snake hips away from those kids now, you'll break their hearts. His, too. Well, confound it. Do you think I want to lose him? Brill and I have been bitter enemies since our college days, Miss Brooks. 
Gad, I'd give anything, anything if I could be sure that Snake Hips would be in that bus to fire up our team. But since he didn't get a diploma... Wait a minute. I think I have an idea. Maybe he could earn his diploma before the bus leaves. What? By making up his credit in English. Yes, I could... Oh, no, I guess it wouldn't work. I was going to say that I could give him an emergency refresher course this morning and then give him the usual test questions after lunch period, but I guess he couldn't pass. Well, of course he'll pass. Believe me, he'll pass. <laughs> oh, Mr. Conklin, he's awfully rusty. You will work on him every minute, Miss Brooks. If you need relief, my daughter Harriet will be at your disposal. She's very good at English, even though she's been in your class. She... Hey, uh, oh, well. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd better go and tell her to stand by. Oh, I'm afraid it's hopeless, Mr. Conklin. Nothing is hopeless, Miss Brooks. There were those who said the father of our country couldn't cross the Delaware in a broken down old rowboat, but he did it. Snake Hips Geary is your craft, Miss Brooks. It's up to you to get him across. If George Washington could do it, you can do it. <laughs> Well, at least you had a boat. All I've got is a leaky bucket. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Harry. You want a meatball? Uh, no, thanks. I guess I'll leave it. They might use it in the big game. <laughs> Where's Snake Hips? Oh, he went out for a little walk. I just took a little walk myself, from Mr. Boynton. He casually decided not to go to the game with me today. Oh, that's a shame, Miss Brooks. Golly, I feel sorry for him. Sorry for him? Well, sure. Snake Hips and I were running over some test questions in Daddy's inner office when Mr. Boynton came in and said he needed his check desperately. What? Unfortunately, Daddy couldn't do anything about it. Golly, that's probably why Mr. Boynton can't go to the game, Miss Brooks. He simply doesn't have the dollar and a quarter, and he's too proud to tell you. You're right, Harriet. That's why he only had milk for lunch. Oh, I'm glad you've got big ears, Harriet. <laughs> Good ears. Uh, did, how did Snake Hips do on the test questions, all right? Oh, not too well, Miss Brooks. He didn't remember any of the practice exercises you ran over with him. <sighs> Golly, I'm afraid he's hopeless. Well, don't sell him short, Harriet. He probably was never any good at football during practice, but in the actual game, he rose to great heights. And if wishful thinking was money, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> Hi, Snake Hips. Hello, Harriet. A little warm in here for that old sweater of mine, Miss Brooks. I have an idea it's going to get warmer for me when I'm taking your test. Oh, now you're not getting nervous about the test, are you, Snake Hips? Not really. English test ain't never scared me overly. <laughs> I just, just hope you feel as confident as me, Miss Brooks. Oh, I do. I ain't never been so overly in my entire country. <laughs> That's a split participle with a dangling infinitive. Well, I think I'll run along now, Miss Brooks. I've got a class pretty soon. Good luck, Snake Hips. Thanks, Harriet. Oops. Oh, hi, Daddy. Bye, Daddy. At ease. <laughs> Miss Brooks, you will have to find a new honorary cheerleader for the faculty rooting section. For some unknown reason, Mr. Boynton has chickened out. Uh, he's not... <laughs> not going to the game. Oh, but you've got to go to the game, Mr. Boynton. You wouldn't want to waste this ticket. What ticket? I bought it for a friend, but he got sick. It's all yours. Oh, well, thanks. Oh, but it seems you've given me the wrong ticket, Snake Hips. Wrong ticket? Yes, this says Miller's Pawn Shop, one sweater, $1.25. <laughs> Here, give me this. this. This is the one here. Anyway, it was very nice of Mr. Miller. That old sweater ain't worth a dollar and a quarter. Not to him, leastwise. Well, I'll be seeing you folks later. Oh, now, wasn't that a nice thing for him to do? He heard about your predicament in Mr. Conklin's office. Oh, well, Snake Hips is always doing nice things for people, Miss Brooks. That's why I implore you to mark his test paper with the most leniency possible. <laughs> Sir, you're not suggesting that Miss Brooks do anything unethical? Certainly not. <laughs> Just bear in mind, Miss Brooks, that our boys need him. Give him the consideration he deserves for his monumental contribution to the glorious athletic history of this school. Above all, 
give him credit for what he did in the big game of 1912. 1912? <laughs> but Miss Brooks couldn't know anything about that game. Why, she probably couldn't even understand football in 1912. <laughs> oh, I guess I understood as much football as any... 1912? <laughs> Nobody here. Miss Brooks must have gone to Mr. Conklin's office to tell him how Snake had scored in the test. Yeah, I suppose so. And I wish we knew how he scored, not knowing whether he passed or flunked his murder. Lots of papers on her desk. <laughs> his test papers probably among them. The plainly marked. His score in everything. Marked. <laughs> in big numbers. The plain. Just get that out of your mind, Walter. Uh, her desk is rather cluttered with papers, though. Uh, I think we ought to sort of tidy it up for her. That's a splendid idea. <laughs> well, what do you know? What? I found that test paper we weren't looking for. The snake hips pass? Well, what did he score? Nineteen. Nineteen! The poor old guy flunked out. I'll take that paper, Walter. Gosh, I should have expected the worst the minute I saw his name at the top of the page. What do you mean? He didn't spell it right. <laughs> yeah, but surely Miss Brooks won't have the heart to tell Mr. Conklin the truth about this. I'm going over there and find out. If Miss Brooks is so lacking in the milk of human kindness that she can tell Mr. Conklin Snake Hips flunked, and that sweet old fellow loses his job, well, I never want to see her again. You really mean that? I certainly do. There's only one thing I hold above kindness, Walter, and that's honesty. If Miss Brooks can be so dishonest as to lie about this score merely to protect his job, I never want to see her again. <laughs> Boy, she's sure in solid with him. <laughs> Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. Well, Snake Hips and I are waiting for the news. Happy news, I hope. I did my very best, Miss Brooks. I know you did. Uh, excuse me, sir. I, I was curious about... Uh, well, um, we all are, Boynton. We're just about to have our curiosity relieved. Have you marked my test paper? I have. Well, tell us what we're all waiting to hear. What was his score? Sixty-six. Sixty-six! Sixty-six. Sixty-six? You can stop bidding. That's as high as I'll go. <laughs> Congratulations, you passed. Now, Snake Hips, we've got to get down and get that lucky sweater of yours out of hock before the bus leaves. Uh, pardon me, Miss Brooks, Mr. Boynton. Come along, Snake Hips. Come along. Thank you, Miss Brooks. Well, old Snake Hips really came through for us, didn't he, Mr. Boynton? Isn't it thrilling? Let's cut the masquerade, Miss Brooks. Snake Hips didn't get 66 in that test. You lied. Lie? How can you say such a thing? Why, that's a vicious, slanderous accusation. That's defamation of character. I could take you to court for that. Why, any judge would... Any jury would... I need a mouthpiece. <laughs> <laughs> that snake hips test paper, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Here it is, Miss Brooks. To do with as your conscience dictates. You may either show it to Mr. Conklin or you may burn it. Oh, now look, Mr. How Boynton. could you do it, Miss Brooks? Under the very gaze of the father of our country, you have plumbed the depths of dishonesty by presenting a fraudulent score. A fraudulent my foot. All told, Snake Hips actually did get 66. What do you mean, all told? Listen, Miss now, Brooks. Now, you listen to me. Mr. Conklin is our principal, and as such, I must obey his instructions, right? Right, but... Before the test, he instructed me to give Snake Hips the benefit of what he did in the game of 1912, right? Right, but... How many points did he score in that game? 47. And in the test? 19. If you will add 47 and 19, that is 66 in my book. <laughs> And so Mr. Conklin has bestowed upon me the great honor of presiding at these emergency commencement exercises for a graduating class of one before the bus leaves. <laughs> this is indeed a happy occasion. <coughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> yes, a very happy occasion. This man is our friend. He is diligent, honest, and unselfish. <laughs> He is true to the cherished ideals of Madison High. <laughs> and now for the presentation of the diploma. Snake hips, it's all yours. Thank you, Miss Brooks. If you folks don't mind, I'll wait for you out in the hall. I seem to have something in my eye. Poor old man. I guess he didn't want to break up in front of us. He probably went out in the hall so he can blubber by himself. <laughs> At a time like this, he needs someone to comfort him. I'll just go out in the hall and blubber with him. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll all go. The buses are waiting. Come along, folks. Step lively, please. Yeah, come on, Mr. Boynton. Come on, Miss Brooks. I'll be right with you. You want to make something of it? early this morning, Walter. I've got to drop in and see Mr. Conklin before my first class. Well, gosh, Miss Brooks, there must be some other way for a perfectly nice English teacher to start off the day than by seeking an encounter with the blood pressure kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that I don't respect Mr. Conklin. It's just that, well, there's something about you, Miss Brooks. And before the hallowed walls of our beloved Madison High heave into view, I want you to know just that I am... Just a minute, Walter. Would you take that last sentence again, please? <laughs> a little slower. Well, is something wrong, Miss Brooks? Well, I would hesitate to correct that sentence, Walter, without a refresher course myself, but what do you mean, heaves into view? Well, every so often you read about how a ship hove into view, don't you? <laughs> well, hove must be the past tense, mustn't it? Heave, have, hove, isn't it? <laughs> not, Walter. Heave, heave, have. Heave, have. <laughs> what did you want me to know before the hallowed walls heave into view? Uh, just that you command as much respect as Mr. Conklin, plus the admiration of all those students who have been fortunate enough to be the recipients of your intuitive powers, and that your personal warmth and charm is exceeded only by your excellence in your chosen field of instruction. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> Why are you giving me this verbal plaque, Walter? Why? Oh, no reason at all. It's just a natural reaction resulting from months of affection growing out of our happy association. I'm being completely sincere, and I have no ulterior motive whatsoever. Then thank you, Walter. You're welcome. Miss Brooks? Yes? Would you do me a favor? <laughs> if I don't, you'll take back your plaque. Well, what is it, Walter? Well, it's the basketball team. As you know, I'm the manager, so it's up to me to see Mr. Conklin about getting some things we need. And? And it's up to you to see Mr. Conklin for me, because I'm rarely up to seeing Mr. Conklin. <laughs> and what I mean is, we've just got to get some more trunks. Where are you going? <laughs> no, we're not going anywhere. We need some stuff for the guys to put on while they're playing. You see, right now there aren't trunks enough to go around all the fellas. Must be pretty stout fellas. <laughs> Every time we send in a substitute, he has to take a blanket along with him so he can change trunks with the fellas he's replacing. 
about ten new pairs should do it fine. Ten new pair? Couldn't you just get a larger blanket? <laughs> Please, Miss Brooks, this is serious. And another thing you gotta talk to Mr. Conklin about is the temperature in that gym. It's positively icy in there. I know, that goes for my classroom, too. You know, the temperature in other parts of the school isn't as important as it is in the gym, Miss Brooks. Why, without the proper uniforms, our guys just can't play their best in that drafty barn. Now, you've just got to talk to Mr. Conklin. Well, let's be more specific, Walter. A, what do you want me to ask, Mr. Conklin? And B, why should it be me instead of you? Well, A, to request $100 worth of athletic equipment from the school board, and B, because you're older and carry more weight. <laughs> If I were driving, you'd be walking by now. <laughs> no, you don't understand, Miss Brooks. I'm not trying to shirk my duties, but this is a legitimate beef. Yeah, well, let me put it this way. In the stockyards, when they want the sheep to run in a certain direction, they don't send out a little lamb to guide them. They send out an old goat. <laughs> you know, what I mean is, I'm sure you've seen it in the newsreels with this broken down old I mean, when they all start to... <laughs> Gosh, Miss Brooks, I hope you're not mad. Of course not, Walter. Why should I be mad? <laughs> oh, good. Then you will do it? You will ask Mr. Conklin for me? Well, I'll do my best, Walter. And now you'd better apply the brakes. The hallowed walls have just haved into view. <laughs>